Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, I think it's uh, three o'clock here in Amsterdam. Um, let's kick off and uh, start this uh, this uh, this webinar we've organized. So already I see a great number of people showing up. Really cool. Nice to have you here. Um, so just a couple of weeks ago we had a discussion on events being cancelled, so physical events being cancelled, and we thought within our eight technologies, we thought, oh, let's create our own webinar. But what's more fun on creating your own webinar is to create it with others as well. So that's why we uh, came up, did a round through Europe, asked other companies as well, other startups as well, uh, to participate in this webinar, and we've managed to do that. And um, we have the support from EuroFM as well. So thanks for having you all here. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of people from different backgrounds, different nationalities. So we'll start off with Seem, who is uh, co-founder uh, of RA Technologies. Seem, can you say hello? Hello, hello. Wow. Great to be here. Thanks, Sebastian, for this great intro. Cool, cool. Uh, we have Bastian uh, de Groot from Ingi. Hi, Bastian. Hello. Hi, all. Uh, nice to have you here, Bastian. Um, Titus Albrecht from Germany. Hi, Titus. Well, Titus is still on mute, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he is. All right, now I'm not on mute anymore. Ah, cool, cool. Nice to have you here, Titus. <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. We have yeah, we have Ricardo Santos from Heptasense. Hello, everyone. Thanks uh, for the invite. Uh, Ricardo, thanks for joining, for joining us. We have Joe from Finland. Thank you, Sebastian, and thanks for the initiative. Great, uh, Great that you were arranging. Cool, cool. And last but not least, we have Maris as well from Estonia. Hi, Maris. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. Cool. So the topic of today's webinar is actually six um, um, startups which boost your building. Um, so we're all going to introduce uh, the company we're working for, the solution we have. Um, every speaker has um, seven to eight minutes time for his presentation. Um, then we have a Q&A session, which is two to three minutes. Um, don't be shy actually use the chat window to ask your questions and we'll uh, we'll share them here um so good as you can see uh, we're starting with seam so seam let me just pass the rights to you and then you can kick off and share your videos or share your share. all right thank you there you go Okay, so hello everybody. I hope you can see my presentation now. Is it all fine? Um, so, um, hi everybody once again. My name is Tim Tucker. I'm CEO and co-founder of RA Technologies. Today I'm going to talk to you about how AI can boost your building's health, efficiency and transparency. So, buildings consume tremendous amount of energy. In fact, they, are, uh, they account for 40% of energy-related CO2 emissions. And um, we in R8 believe that AI will play and is already playing significant role in cutting the em em emissions uh, significantly. Um, in fact, in some of our buildings where we are already operating, we have reduced the carbon footprint uh, by 30% already. So if we are taking it to account from like worldwide view, then it will play like tremendous role. So what is the problem that we are solving? The problem is that modern buildings are, are complex. They contain thousands of data points and components and it's basically inhu inhuman to keep on track that all the systems are always running at the, at the best performance. Um, and, if there are, and if there are like inefficiencies, then it usually results in poor indoor climate 
um, they will consume more energy than they should be and the system's wear off will be faster. And if there's a, like a facility manager role, if you're wearing like a facility manager's hat, then it's always like running this like modern billing, looking at the, at the mirror, like what happened in the past and trying to make the assumptions based on it. Highly like you have a lot of like uh, service providers whose work it's very difficult to validate, keep on track where we are heading. And uh, basically the building itself is not providing any data to make better decisions and have like a transparent overview. AI in the controversy can actually help to run the complex modern buildings very well uh, because it's very good. The software is, is very good at doing repetitive tasks and making a lot of calculations, monitoring that all the systems are, are running like the way they should be. And artificial intelligence can ensure that uh, all HVAC components in your building are performing efficiently meaning that they will provide the required indoor climate. Um, they will, the AI can help to monitor that all the systems are performing uh, as optimally as possible. So we have actually a solution that we call R8 Digital Operator, which is basically like a cloud-based solution that can set up remotely. And once it's set up, it starts to read and write the data to follow that the building is, uh, is achieving its key performance indicators, which is basically energy efficiency, comfortable interclimate, and it has well-performing technical uh, systems. That's, a, that's the target of the, of the AI. So our digital operator, in fact, consists of two main modules. One is diagnostics and the other one is autopilot. Diagnostics, main idea is to check all the data, analyze and find faults. And if the fault is found, it will send out it as a task to a technical service provider and it will validate whether it was actually completed. Autopilot, on the other hand, is a little bit more cooler thing. It actually looks all the time if all the systems are running efficiently and writes the new values to the set points to find the most optimal, uh, to ensure the most optimal uh, efficiency. I'm going to show it in a little bit more detail. So just the diagnostics itself, it's basically like a data-driven fault detection. Um, up to date, we have found over 50,000 faults and some of the faults are, point, are brought out here basically pointing that, hey, there have been some uh, interclimate related issues, some, some valve leakages, some uh, system is not behaving the way it should be. And that means that it's like a task for technician to go and fix it. Autopilot is like this kind of autonomous software that is always running um, in the background and checks four times per hour if all the systems are running optimally. It considers the user's real-time feedback and adapts to the feedback and makes the best uh, parameter selection for the future, considering what happened in the past and how the future will look like in terms of energy prices, weather, etc. Up to date, this module alone has saved over like 6,000 tons of CO2. Uh, here are some case studies. For example, this really cool office building in Estonia uh, that is uh, more than 25,000 square meters large. It has a Siemens flagship uh, solution. We really like Siemens. It's like a very good base solution where to build up on our solution. And in, the, in this project, we took the, the automation system data, we took the billing information model data and merge it all together uh, to find the most optimal uh, control parameters for the systems. And we achieved by doing this um, uh, over 30% of energy savings. And on top of that, we actually improved the uh, indoor climate, a like comfortable indoor climate from 60% to 90%. Here's some more examples of our portfolio. 
we are we are interested in modern and large commercial buildings that are either office buildings hotels or shopping malls and uh, we just add this solution remotely um, to the system and it starts to find the best optimal parameters for it um, so we have very unique value proposition that actually software can achieve if it's very good software and we are very sure that this software is is, uh, is actually achieving very good results um, uh, because we can offer to our customers 100 percent money back guarantee that's 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 how, how sure we are that it's actually providing results that we are promising so just uh, our company numbers we have a little bit more than 20 people we are we started this like more than three years ago and today we are already moving towards like six different countries across europe for example portugal netherlands germany finland estonia and and, and latvia and yeah thank you all that was what i wanted to tell you for sure there's a lot more things that i can add um, but uh, if you're interested in finding out more then please write us or contact us and we were we would gladly help you take your building technical management to the next generation to the next era thank you thanks thanks Seem. so um i've already seen a, a couple of questions in uh, in the q a uh, session uh -huh. so uh, um, let's just uh, uh, kick off with the, with the first one. So Charles is asking, how long does it need to deploy? Yeah, this uh, depends a little bit on the system and the complexity and the size. But if it's if we can access remotely, then yeah, it can take up to like week. If it's very large, like systems where are like more than fifty thousand data points, it can be a little bit more time consuming. This is natural, I guess. Yeah. So uh, another question is, um, how can it reach the optimal thermal comfort? Does it receive feedback from people in the facilities? Yes, if there are like, uh, so there are like two ways. One is of course that uh, if there are like room controllers, then we always look what the people are doing, uh, understanding their behavior and the system adapts to it. And then there is also like a, this kind of building management module where like facility manager say, can say like, hey, in this room type, I would like to have the indoor climate to be in, in this range, and then the system adapts to it. And of course, every room can have its uh, small like differences as well. Cool. So, yeah. um, um, uh, final question: um, Do you have an, an an API to communicate with CMMS software to manage the ticketing and all the data you collect? Yes, yes. We actually would like to send all all the tasks that we find and to another software, or if we can collect energy consumption information, then we can also send it to another so, uh, software. Um, so our solution is something that can work or should work also without UI. It's basically just running on the background and making sure that everything is running as, uh, as well as, as it can be. And send out all the, all the things through an email or through some open API and so on. Okay. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Um, Bastian, up to you. Thank Thanks. you. So Bastian, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm Bastian de Groot. I'm the CEO and co-founder of INGI. Um, so what we do is we use the lighting upgrade in your building to make your building smart. So we integrate all the sensors required to make your building smart inside your luminaires and thereby making the integration far more uh, the, the upgrade to a small board building far more efficient. Um, so what we see happening in the world is that uh, you know, millions and millions of sensors are being deployed worldwide in commercial real estate. Um, and the deployment of all these sensors has several key challenges. So all these sensors need to be installed. 
the battery needs to be changed because typically you use battery wireless, uh, battery powered wireless sensors. Um, you often end up with multiple networks in your building because each sensor is uh, supplied with its own wireless technology and they can't uh, leverage each other's infrastructure. Um, so that means you typically have to deploy multiple uh, gateways to connect every sensor and uh, you need to get full wireless coverage in your building for your wireless sensors. And everyone that ever used Wi-Fi in office knows how hard it is to get full wireless signal coverage in every corner of the building. So what we do um, is we integrate the sensors into the luminaires. Um, that means uh, we have no battery powering issues because the luminaires are already powered. Um, so no new wires are needed and we can just power use the power supply to the luminaires already. Um, we have no installation cost because with the installation of the luminaires, the sensors are already installed. Um, and we have guaranteed optimal wireless coverage because every luminaire can repeat the signal of any other luminaire or any other sensor. And because the luminaire is placed every two to three meters, we always have coverage and we can always find a perfect uh, route to wherever sensor is placed somewhere in a faraway corner of the building. Now, what we can do with the luminaires uh, as standard is, of course, every luminaire has a PIR, so we can give you occupancy sensoring data without actually adding any additional hardware. Uh, we can do indoor navigation by having your mobile phone localize itself against uh, the position of the radios in the luminaires. And we can do asset tracking by placing tags on the assets. Um, and none of this requires any additional hardware into the luminaire. And then on top of that, we can use the luminaires as a backbone for your smart building. Um, so we can, for example, deploy uh, call buttons, which allow you to request services, uh, or clean this room or provide feedback. And because the lum the, these uh, devices only need to send a signal to the closest luminaire, um, we can make them fully battery free. So we can use the kinetical energy from the button press to create the radio signal. Um, uh, the first luminaire picks it up and uh, transports this further. We also can do things like climate uh, monitoring. So again, we can make battery free solar powered uh, sensors that you can place anywhere and through the backbone of the, of the network, they connect to the, um, to the gateway. And we have a whole range of additional sensors uh, that we can uh, manufacture in a very cost efficient way without any batteries because they need so little energy because the luminaires make take care of the radio communication. Um, so what we see is um, that, we, that we significantly reduce the cost of making your building smart because so normally you would be investing in a lighting control system, you, a smart sensor system, maybe an indoor navigation system. Um, and what we do is we basically make a lighting control system that is lower cost than your existing lighting control system. And for a, a small additional fee, we provide all the additional services. So the total cost of the system is significantly lower than rolling out all these separate systems. Um, so what use cases can we enable? Um, so we do basically four main categories, that is uh, localizing equipment or asset tracking, indoor navigation, occupancy analytics, and, and battery, uh, and, and utilizing the backbone for uh, additional placement of sensors. So indoor, if we start with uh, indoor navigation, um, this works very simple. So uh, if, you, if you look into a building, uh, you know, uh, employees spend a large amount of time looking for colleagues, looking for people, looking for rooms, uh, visitors especially. So what we do is uh, we enable indoor navigation and we can basically utilize any indoor navigation package. So you can, for example, take Google Maps and we can make Google Maps work indoor, which means you can have desk to desk navigation instead of door to door navigation where Google Maps keeps working inside your building. Um, or you can use your own uh, proprietary indoor navigation app. Um, uh, we do analytics of uh, space utilization, so we can give you the full breakdown of all your rooms, and when have they been used, how long have they been used, 
uh, and we can give you an indication of the amount of people that were in that room helping you to optimize your space utilization um, and in case you have a room booking system what we can do is say hey a room was reserved nobody showed up um, so we release the room in the room booking we cancel the catering we charge the cancellation fee and all of that happens automatically based on the occupancy data that we gather um, and we typically see that this occupancy data improves your uh, real estate um, performance by about 30%. So we can reduce your real estate needed by about 30% by telling you better what rooms you can use or not use and by giving you information about um, uh, the booking versus being used uh, of your room. Um, we also use the uh, um, occupancy data to improve your climate control. Um, so what we see is that uh, we, of course, have a lot of presence data from the lighting system by linking that to the climate uh, system, for example, through a bill, through a system like uh, RA Tech. Um, so we feed the, the presence data in uh, RA Tech can then tune your HVAC based on the expected um, occupancy data um, and turn the heating on or off or adjust your scheduling based on the actual usage of the building versus the expected usage of the building and we see from literature that you save about 20 to 40 percent on your energy save uh, consumption for your HVAC based on your lighting presence data um, we also do um, environmental sensors um, so that, of course, improves the quality of your building, the, the, the productivity, but it also helps people that the moment they're making a room booking, they can not only see if a room is booked, they can see if a room is occupied, but they can also see, hey, this room has a high or extremely low temperature or very high CO2 level. I might be checking a room which actually has the right climate conditions right at this moment. Um, and we can feed the climate data into, um, for example, a, uh, your, your dynamic cleaning system, and therefore only cleaning rooms that have actually been used uh, today, and therefore only cleaning rooms that have been used. And of course, especially in the situation where we are today, this is you know, hugely saving on your cleaning expenses, uh, because large parts of the building currently will not be used on any given day. Um, we have the call button so we can make a task into your IWMS system and straight away generate a task. So, for example, if somebody requests a room to be cleaned, you generate the task. The task is dispatched to your cleaning service, who then can use indoor navigation to straight away navigate to the room where cleaning was requested. Um, making a fully automated loop and deploying the cleaning personnel where it's actually needed. Uh, we do consumable monitoring, uh, so these are small sensors we place in the uh, uh, in, in consumable dispensers, and we can check the level. So we can check the, lo the level of your soap dispensers, your paper dispensers, and um, and uh, update them uh, accordingly. Um, then we typically get the question, "Hey, but we already have lighting, so this does only work if we have lighting." Um, well, actually, what we see is that 80% of buildings currently don't have a label C, um, and that by uh, um, up and, and that light upgrading your lighting to LED is actually the first step that people take to make their building C level compliant. So we see that about 80% of the buildings currently are looking to upgrade their building to LED lighting anyway. So that's the perfect opportunity um, to put our system in place. Bastian, oh, I need to. I need yes. to almost almost. Uh, uh, do you have just a couple of slides left, or yes, because you're already running over time, and we'd yes. like to have some 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 space open for questions as well. Yep. Um, so the system really uh, serves the needs of the buyer of the lighting. He gets a perfectly simple to install system, and the buyer of the smart building he gets a smart building system without having to install pay for the uh, infrastructure. And here are a couple of. Uh, case studies we've done. So we've done a large hospital where we deployed all of these solutions on a large scale. Um, and here's a large um, uh, school building where we, we applied all this of this technology. Cool. Uh, and 
yeah, that was it. <laughs> well, it looks, uh, uh, Bastian, it, it really looks good. And as you mentioned, it's, uh, uh, we're able to, uh, to integrate it into our system as well, the occupancy data. Mm -hmm. But looking from, an, from a, um, hey, you have multiple values or multiple value propositions, what's the most attractive value proposition for a facility manager currently? Um, triggers them. So, um, I mean, first of all, there is the lighting. Um, so, uh, I mean, the lighting is highly attractive and that's, that's sort of a low risk uh, investment, right? Because you've got to put the lighting in anyway. And we see that we already make a significant saving on the rollout of your smart lighting. And then on the beyond lighting features, asset tracking is at the moment our most requested feature. Uh, deliver tremendous amounts of value to hospitals and uh, logistics centers, helping them to track and trace their equipment. So uh, uh, hopping onto that one, uh, what's the ac uh, accuracy of your, your indoor tracking? Uh, um, it depends very much on the height of the ceiling. So we guarantee five meters, but typically in an office setting or an hospital setting with a two and a half meter high ceiling, we see the, in practice about one to two meter accuracy. Okay. Cool. We have a couple of other questions as well, but um, I'll leave them open for now. Um, cool, Sebastian, of Bastian, thanks. That's me. Um, moving over to Tidus. Okay. Here you go, Tidus. All right, thank you, Sebastian. Uh, first of all, uh, really thank you to RA Tech uh, for organizing something at the moment, especially as European politicians are not able to work as good as together as you guys are organizing everything. So uh, even being honest, I think this is uh, very important what you guys organize. So thank you very much. And also having a little jump uh, somehow into a different topic um, as Relix Data is uh, working mainly with uh, market data. And it's, it's, uh, uh, we always call it um, uh, we do everything until the front door and from there on most of you guys start to work. Um, so Relix Data is actually um, a market data and a real estate analytics platform uh, based in Germany. And the idea uh, why we founded Relix Data was um, because I was working for 10 years in real estate investment and we always uh, had the same issues we were solving. First of all, we had to do a lot of research. There was no market data available. So mostly of time during a day was uh, really doing research, reading PDF documents, uh, analyzing uh, long papers. So that was the first hassle. And the second hustle was actually really to crunch Excel, right? I mean, uh, uh, worldwide, I think 95% of all portfolios are managed over, um, um, over Excel. And I think even in Germany, we're at 98%. Uh, so this is uh, what we and my co-founder wanted to change from the beginning on with Relix Data, really to, to help everybody uh, being able to work more with, the, uh, uh, with real estate and not with data crunching and doing research. So how is it looking back in the days when you were trying to find out what's the, the perfect rent you want to pay for your uh, uh, office space or as an investor and what calculation can you do? We have this beautiful uh, market uh, research, for example, from J JLL, CBRE, all these players. And there you see, for example, you see the huge ranges, right? In every neighborhood, the rents per square meter per month are in between 10 or 18, or if you see Mitte, it's between 13 and 20. So this is a huge range. And uh, we thought there's so much money invested into real estate uh, uh, this cannot be the truth, right? You as a real estate expert, you need a, a way better number and, and especially on, on, on investing, on financing, you need details. So the idea, what we did in a first step was to really uh, build up a platform that combines all the data out there, which you need as a real estate expert. So we have uh, partners on the broker sides, which are um, um, bringing in all the um, broker reports in a digital way. We are uh, using all the listing portals, the information on that. In Germany, uh, we are a high regulatory country, so you need a lot of regulation information. We have a partnership regarding socioeconomic uh, data. We have deal news. 
So this is what we are bringing on the platform. And we have special corporations like with High Street or last, last week, we just announced our partnership with Ivana. So we are being, uh, trying to be a marketplace where you get all the market data you need. But the most important actually, and this is the huge change, is that we are structuring your own data. So the biggest issue, and especially in Germany, but it's worldwide and we know it from our uh, customers, which are uh, very, very broad, I would say, um, everybody is struggling with their own data. So there are these rent rolls, which are always in a different format, and you always have to structure that information. And we build a machine learning algorithm, which brings all that information per drag and drop in our system, and you have a very good and easy um, um, usable BI solution for your real estate data. The most important thing is users not only uh, um, combine the information they are gathering uh, uh, from the inside, from their own data, but all the transaction teams, for example, receiving a lot of offers um, 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 and information from, from, from the market, they are combining and connecting that data with our platform to build up their own in-house comparable database and to give themselves the best benchmarks they've ever seen. So all our customers are connecting rent rolls and exposés with our platform and we digitalize it and give it to them as insights. And out of that, we are able to build as the first company within Germany, real benchmarks for the whole real estate industry in Germany. So to have an idea how the platform actually looks, you can understand your own data very fast as you just connect it with a platform. And then you have all the market data you can access with your own data and all the other data information I was just talking about. And the, really the most important thing is the, the data you are connecting and gathering within your own company is so big. Most or actually every, every company so far we have met was never able to, to build up an in-house comparable database because they can just not handle the amount of data. And this is what we are giving our um, um, customers, the possibility to really gather the information, to make it accessible and to discuss it and not to really crunch it all the time and to do research. It's really to work with the data they, they are getting provided from the market. Um, some of our customers, and this is the most important at the moment, are pretty big companies. And these big companies, of course, receive a lot of information. And this is the idea to first really work with the big companies out there and then also provide uh, uh, this information to smaller companies. At the moment, I would say we have about uh, this, the latest figure is December. So we're running a little bit late, but uh, we have about uh, uh, 60,000 assets so far on our platform. And um, on comparable part, we are about 15 million on comparables on our platform. Uh, we are a team of 35 at the moment. And of course, as a technology company, and I think this is very important to pronounce prop tech is uh, a lot of time, there's a lot of technology stuff and not that much on, on really real estate and, and property technology. But I think uh, we combine it very, very good from both sides coming from the technology part and really from the um, real estate part. That was my um, short uh, presentation. I wanted to keep it a little bit under time. Um, so maybe there's some questions left. Oh, oh good. Um, so, Titus, um, how many Excel lists do you have? You already made obsolete <laughs> with the sixty thousand assets being on a uh, uh, site. How many typical sources do people use for for um, gathering all the information? Um, I mean, it, it, it really depends. I mean, it's also not only 60,000 assets. So a portfolio or a huge uh, residential block can be one asset, but it's like a couple of hundreds buildings actually. So this really depends. Um, of course, we are also trying to build APIs to the big systems, uh, uh, for example, to Yardi. But all these big companies, they always say they are very open-minded and open on APIs. Actually, we have not met or only met a few companies which are really able to share data with us so we are really focused on the on the Excel sheets. Yep. And so we have a, a, a question: Is um, uh, can you customize the tool slash dashboard to the to the customer? And also, can you add data uh, from the market to compare your data set to the outside ones? Yeah, you can. And actually, this was at the beginning when we found it really data. This was the the part where I always thought, which is not never going to happen from the industry. 
But the last month, and especially before Corona times, it was uh, heavily asked by our customers. And this is why you share your data on an anonymized and aggregated level. So you as a user are never able to see, of course, the competitor house number and the tenant name and when he's moving out, but you can compare it on an anonymized and aggregated level. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, it was a bit quick. <laughs> <laughs> now I've lost my screen. Where, where? Uh, let me just let me just move forward. So, Ricardo, you're up next. Portugal. Let me just. Should I jump back to share? Is it easier? No, for no, you? no, 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 no. All right. Got it. Got it. Thanks. Okay. Just get a quick heads up if you're seeing my screen and if you're seeing. Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. Yeah. Perfectly fine. All right. Hello, everyone again. My name is Ricardo from AptaSense. Uh, so, what we do at AptaSense is a video analytics um, a platform for surveillance cameras. And the theme of this presentation is going to be boosting more revenues through advanced analytics which is accomplished using video analysis. So let me start uh, with this uh, sentence from uh, one of the McKinsey, McKinsey uh, studies. They said that when a mall operator uses advanced analytics to select tenants, optimize mall layout and determine rents, its revenues can rise by 20%. This is quite a bold statement, but I will show you that that is actually possible. So when, if you look at this picture, this is a mall picture. Um, we all know that e-commerce is, uh, is competing with physical stores inside the shopping center. So it's competing with the shopping centers. But it's, it, there is something that is, that is unique to shopping centers. And you can see that in this picture. If you look at this picture, you'll see that people can go to shopping centers with their family, their friends, their kids. So shopping center today is all about the experience what people can do in the whole afternoon or all morning. This is not just some, not a place to purchase something. It's an experience by itself. That's why what we are, I'm, I'm presenting here, the advanced analytics compare with the basic analytics that most of the shopping centers use today. It will make a huge difference because shopping centers today, they just have sensors on the entry of the shopping center to count how many people are entering the facility. They have access sometimes to the tenant sales, the, the, the retail stores, the restaurants. And they also do visitors interviews to understand how they, they use the, the, the shopping center. And what I'm going to present you today is other metrics. I call it micro analytics, in which you can understand exactly how people use the space, how they move inside the space, the, the, the correlation between stores, what is the, the, the the optimize how, to, how can you optimize the layout based on how people move inside the facility? So that's what I'm going to focus. AppSense works with surveillance cameras. So I believe in most of the shopping facilities, they already have cameras installed for other reasons, security reasons. They already have cameras everywhere. And we, you can, uh, AppSense uses, uh, use the same cameras that you already have to connect to our platform and extract value from them. So you connect your cameras to our platform the platform does video analytics in real, in real time and you get reports and the alerts in real time. All of that GDPR compliant, general data protection regulation. The video processing can be done in the cloud or in local servers that AptiSense installs. You do not need to change your infrastructure to use AptiSense. So let me show you some examples. Um, AptiSense can be used for security. Uh, in, a, in a retail store, for example, AptiSense can detect in real time and alert security teams if someone is stealing something from the store by detecting suspicious behaviors. And this is quite important because if a shopping center uh, has a percentage of the revenues of their tenants, 3% is, uh, there's a 3% loss caused by theft. So this could be quite interesting for them. And for the shopping, uh, shopping center facility itself, you can understand using AptiSense how people use the space, where they spend most of their time, what is the path they take, if they go to one store and then to the other, what is the correlation between them? And you can get all of that through AptiSense. And also the parking uh, manager. 
you can use AptiSense to understand what type of cars uh, the visitors are using when they go to shopping. Because through the cars, you can see the, or you can correlate the purchasing power of the visitors. If they have BMWs, uh, Mercedes, how many people are inside the store, how, many, how, many, how much time they spent inside. So you can correlate all this information. And this is very valuable. Have the sense as a lot of analytics today that you can use. This is some of them that you can use today to boost your revenues in a shopping center that you can use today in shopping facilities. So the magic formula is really this. If you, if you know, if you have the data to understand what are the most uh, visited stores and you know the right location based on the mix of stores inside the shopping facility, you can increase your growth. It is not a matter of uh, knowing how to optimize the growth in, of one tenant itself. You are not interested in, in uh, let's say, maximize the revenue of uh, Zara or McDonald's. Your interest is to maximize the mix of stores. If you know that people go to one store and then to the next, you need to optimize where to put those stores so you can ma maximize the mix of all, those, uh, all th those stores and restaurants. Let me give you a quick example on how you can leverage the data from AptiSense. In this dummy example, this is, uh, this is not a, real, uh, a real, real data. For example, Zara, imagine that you want to understand how Zara is, um, is um, performing. You, you, you can put the top three uh, locations that people go before going to Zara and the top three locations that go after going to Zara. And, no, and now you have the, the, the correlation between uh, these, these tenants. So you can optimize the layout based on that. You also have the metrics like how many people enter the store or just pass by, how much time they spend, spend inside the store, how many people enter, and also very important, what type of people or group of people go to the store. If they're going alone, if they're going with other adults or with their kids. That's very important because today you can see sometimes some shopping centers are putting playgrounds in front of the stores. The reason for that is because they know that that store is, um, is making some, some, uh, some families with kids going to that store. So that's why they put the playgrounds. So that's, that's all about the experience. And at the sense is here to help you uh, drive to the, the change or shift to a data driven company. We are not just providing technology, we really want to help you understand how to, to leverage that. So that's it, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, you have here my contacts if you want to reach me afterwards. Thank you. Cool, Ricardo. Um, haven't seen any, any questions in the Q&A yet, uh, but uh, perhaps you can tell me how much time does it take um, before getting any, any results or any, any results out of the system? Yeah, so all the analytics that I show you in a, in a previous slide is something that we already have. So in the same week that you start working with us, you can already get data from that. So it, and then it depends if you want to get results in one day, one week, one month, it's really up to you, but you can get results from, from day one that you have it on your facilities. Wow, good. Any other questions from anybody? Don't see any. Well, thanks, Ricardo. Let's uh, move over to Finland. Joe. Thank you. So we were able to share the screen. Yeah. So probably you're able to see my screen now. Yep. Great. So what we want to bring to property managers and property owners is saving some peace of mind, savings in time and in money, and also peace of mind by minimizing the risks coming from water. Uh, SmartLot then is a service uh, that we have provided to over 6,400 properties all around Europe currently. In the beginning, we thought that by 2030, already 40% of world's population will face sweet water scarcity. Even though we are not those countries in Europe that will suffer the first, we can be the countries that will show examples of how to use water sustainably on a sustainable way. 
Uh, so there we started. We started as a, as a water saving company, but we had really big problems in reporting all the good savings that we were doing. So we started thinking, how could we digitalize the water metering uh, in a way that we wouldn't have to change the existing infrastructure? And therefore, we pivoted into remote reading of, of water meters. So 6,300 properties all around Europe, since there is uh, lots of people from the commercial real estate today listening. Uh, a couple of examples, for example, NSE, it's a stock listed uh, property owner from the Netherlands. They, they started with uh, smart button in, in 10 buildings, and now they have um, uh, scaled our service to all portfolio. So that's uh, how we want to work. Uh, it's easy, it's, it's scalable. So this is the why. So still, uh, even, even we are in 2020, most of the water meters are read manually by men, pen and paper. And it's, we think that it's absolutely ridiculous that still today property managers or, or maintenance persons, they have to drive down to the site to collect the water data, and drive back to the office and send it to the property managers who are then trying to analyze that data. That data is typically gathered um, on a frequency of one month or in 12 months, which makes it super difficult to detect any deviations or, or leaks based on, on that data. So lots of spent time gathering the data. Um, you're not able to see if there's any deviations. Uh, if there's a big leak, it will be a surprise, an unpleasant surprise that you wouldn't want. Um, and if we think about that, 70% of all the damages caused to the buildings are caused by water. And now you as a property manager or property owner, you have already digitalized lots of processes. You have digitalized your um, uh, district heating data or uh, gas heating data and electricity, but water, which is causing you, you the most damages, uh, we are doing it still manually. So, Here's our solution. It's a device that you put on top of the existing water meter. Uh, you attach it with the elastic band. There's a camera which is taking pictures and through optical recognitions and mobile connectivity, we are sending that data on real time to the cloud where our software is analyzing that data tens of thousands of times more sharply than any of us uh, human beings could ever do. If there's any deviations or leaks, it will send you the alarms. Uh, it will help you doing the reporting automatically towards the water utilities, or if you are in the middle of process of reporting your press results. So just by one click, you will have all that data. The installation itself uh, takes uh, everything from five minutes to 15 minutes to install. Uh, it's a universal fit and this is one of the reasons why big names have wanted to uh, uh, put the cooperation with us into the next level. So the water utilities are typically owning the water meters. So you are not allowed to change those. And each of the water utilities have their own rules and regulations and preferences, what type of water meters they want to use. But with our solutions, we are not doing any permanent installation. You can, it's basically an optical eye, which is there all the time, taking a look what the water meter stands for. Then if you have some already digitalized meter, meters, we can all also take that data into our platform and create value from the water. Here's an example. So even if it's a complex building, uh, let's say, uh, multi-tenant building where lots of consumption through the day and night, um, there should be those minutes when the water consumption stops. So we are able to spot these type of continuous flows from the data 
here is an example of a building from 3 to 4 a.m. at night where it shouldn't have all the time water consumption. So there we can see that, okay, there's eight liters per minute water consumed all the time. Uh, only with the Dutch water prices where the water is really cheap, 1.2 euro per cubic meter, it will add up costs to 5,000 euros. And once it's found and fixed, uh, the data looks like this. So there's these minutes, there's still consumption, but there's these minutes the water consumption stops. So you as a property manager, even in these corona times where you don't have maybe tenants inside your uh, office buildings, you can be sure that uh, the water is going to the right places and it's, it's, uh, there's no leaks. So this is the basic, uh, uh, small leaks uh, occur, these um, uh, 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 continuous flows, uh, what we are detecting. And then there's these sudden big leaks, for example, if the pipe bursts. So we are able to, by learning algorithms, also uh, able to detect those as well. Uh, it's fully compliant with uh, Brian Prest lead green key. And uh, uh, it, for example, if we take Priam in use, it's already eight points uh, just by taking smart button in. A little bit data. So based, I, I mentioned that we have all over 6,000 properties already in service. So based on that data, we have found out that in 26% of buildings have monthly leaks. Average is 3.38 liters, which is costing 2,100 euros per year if, if they keep on running. And if it goes to structure, the structures, of course, even, even more. Uh, pricing is simple, so it's simple to buy. Uh, those buildings that doesn't have complex water use, so let's say office buildings, it's one euro per day. Those buildings that, that has various consumptions, so hotels, these type of buildings, it's two euro per day. And if you take a longer fixed term, uh, it's, uh, it's then uh, cheaper. I think I have spent my time. Exactly, so. on the two, two minutes over for uh, a Q&A, uh, Joe. Um, really cool. Um, what about the, the integration of this data with uh, uh, an energy monitoring system? Uh, how is that? Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah, we always think about the end customer. So if the end customer is all, already using some existing building and its management software, uh, we will do the integration with, with their existing software. So we have the API documentation for that. It's a REST type API, easy to implement. It's already been integrated to over 50 different platforms. Cool. Uh, as well, you mentioned that the, the cost of water is still really low compared to other utilities, uh, natural gas, electricity. Uh, do you see more and more attention to water leakage? Yeah, absolutely. Now, for example, in the Netherlands, I think you're the most uh, advanced when it comes to sustainability. So definitely, we just found a leak from a building in the, in, in the Netherlands where the leak was in the, in the hot water system, uh, which was also creating lots of uh, euros at the same time. So there's many drivers, but demand drivers. But basically you can think that because we know that everyone has leaks, so it will always pay itself back. It, the, the leak will happen. If, it, if one leak happens, then it has paid itself back for, for a year or years. Okay, cool. Thanks, Joe. Over Thank to you. Marius. Here you go, Marius. Yes, hello, just a second. We're able to see your screen. Okay, the screen is shared. 
So hello everybody once more. Um, I'm Matis Lars from Ninja Solutions. I act as a CEO and I'm one of the co-founders of the company. Um, so in essence, a truly smart building can be measured by how well it responds to the long-term needs of assets investors and, uh, and owners. Uh, and and the immediate and ongoing needs of its uh, occupants. So, um, so I would like to focus on, on the things what we can do uh, 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 for the occupants and doing it fast and, and basically now. So uh, Ninja offers a biometrically secured uh, cloud-based uh, access control solution uh, for modernizing office buildings. Uh, and we are, <clears throat> we are improving the end user's experience by reduction of physical keys, cards, and contact points in premises. Uh, so basically we, we, we face three main risks and uh, this is what we have uh, got uh, clear uh, in our action of, of four years and developing our system uh, so um, when we talk about um, access control then then we see that uh, uh, that the access card copiers are freely available on the market so you can you can buy from ebay uh, card copier which costs either one or up to thirteen dollars and every, everyone uh, can have it uh, so the the rest of the risks what uh, we have connected to the access control is uh, disgruntled employees and all the basically all the main managers uh, say the same thing that uh, that the employees or bad levers are, are the biggest risk. Um, and the third one is, um, is careless and uninformed employees. Um, and also, also the uh, employees of third parties or, or from the companies of, or, which are outsourced. So, uh, so basically when using uh, access cards, we 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 are at a big risk so we do not really know who is behind the physical access card so it can be copied it can be changed um, and and it can be kind of uh, used um, or duplicated uh, even officially so one can have several access cards and, and they, they can travel around from one person to another. So basically we have a situation where, where um, strangers can uh, be or can, can come to your uh, office space. Um, at the same time, uh, we have nowadays uh, at everyone's pocket, uh, biometrical identification tool. Uh, so every smartphone has a fingerprint reader or a face recognition uh, uh, system. And from there, from there is our idea or uh, concept for development uh, uh, coming that um, that for now we can integrate multiple vendor services onto a single connected platform that works with elevators, access control soft and hardware, parcel lockers, security services, and other connected IoT devices. So one good friend said that we kind of have buttons in, in our pockets. Um, we integrate different vendors and and this is uh, I think a great, great thing for uh, maintenance companies and security companies. So that in the in the portfolio, uh, you can you can 
take care of several buildings. Um, the solution or to have developed is uh, especially recommended to office owners or tenants who look for cost efficiency. Uh, we can reduce the amount of workloads of supporting personnel, but simultaneously looking for a considerable improvement in access management quality. Um, to, to make uh, use of it, uh, so nowadays when we face the coronavirus pandemic, uh, we decided to uh, start a contactless uh, building. And, and, and this, was, this has been a great, great success. Uh, so here we can, we can look a film what, what we made recently. And this gives an overview of, of the components, what we can mix. Cool, Maris. Thanks. Thanks for sharing this. It's really cool to see a contactless office in this time. So, um, can you perhaps tell me how, how much time did it took to integrate uh, this into an existing building? Because you did it in an, an existing building, so not in a new building, is it? Uh, right. So now it already goes fast. Uh, so the, the work, uh, the, the integration work took several days, but uh, the most time consuming is uh, the preparation uh, let's say the agreements with the landlords and and finding all the licenses and this this can take several weeks. Okay. Good. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Thanks for your time. That is really good to uh, to see that. Uh, let me just go back to this one. So um, everybody, I'd like to, uh, uh, or I hope you have a, had a good time and uh, really enjoyed uh, the different solutions uh, um, we've been presenting to you at this time. Um, I think it's really cool to see how many different solutions um, have come uh, uh, um, so far so quick. And, and uh, I know a couple of them are already uh, on that way for a couple of years already as well, but we see changes in in the industry. We see changes in uh, 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 to uh, to actually prop tech solutions, which are really adding value uh, and optimizing day-to-day uh, -day, uh, processes. So I'd like to thank you all. If you have any questions or if you have any any uh, uh, concerns or things you want to mention. Uh, reach out to anybody of this, uh, this uh, uh, um, presentations or any other presentations. Uh, we will be able to share the recording of this session. So yeah, you'll be able to see that one. Um, and for now, I'd like to thank you all and uh, say goodbye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sebastian. Thanks, Ed. Yep. Very good. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Bye.